What's up, guys? It's Clifton again. I'm back here with Clifton Gaming, bringing you another Clifton Top 8 deck profile. Uh, this past Saturday, I got fourth place at the Columbus Regional playing Snake Eye Fire King. Um, no spice or anything crazy this weekend. Just want to play um, a pretty easy deck and a deck that I enjoy leading um, NCY Chase Niagara. This is one of the last regionals before Rota. So, yeah. But um, first, we'll do a shout outs. Uh, we'll do a shout out to Cat for recording the video. Uh, shout out to Good Gaming for being a dope sponsor. Shout out to you through the decades. Uh, it's my home store. We have a regional this weekend, September 28th. If you're near the area or need points, come on down. Um, and then shout out to Sunny for giving me this Inferno Yard and holding a Bud Light can. This is this is crazy. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, huge shout out to Luke Frangella for being my sponsor and paying me for all these regional tops, helping fund the, uh, the Zaxby's tab. <laughs> uh, but yeah, without further ado, we'll get started. Uh, so, three Black Witch, standard, three Wanted, and then the original. Don't need any more of these. Uh, one Ash, Oak, Poplar, Flamberge, also pretty standard. Um, I've seen a lot of people start bumping this card up to, like, two or three. Um, but, I, however, I think that's a lot better in, like, the pure version. Uh, I don't play Temple or Snake Eye Bell Star. Uh, those cards are useless in Fire King. I don't think they're needed at all. Um, but, yeah, in Fire King, I think this is all you need. Uh, the level one that you want to be summoning is Ponix. So, and then uh, throughout the combo, you're making do little Chimera and popping it to add back a fire from the graveyard, and then you're always adding this back, so you have enough follow up for next turn. So you don't really have to worry about having a, an extra oak or something in deck to search for like original on the follow up or something like that. And then we got the bonfires to search these guys. Uh, call me crazy, but this was like the worst card in my deck all weekend. Um, maybe it is because I'm playing like a pretty low Snake Eye count compared to Pure and stuff. Um, but yeah, I just dead drew this card, like, a lot, because now, I mean, most of the time, whenever you go first, uh, your turn one, like, Black Witch or Snake Eye Ash combo and stuff, um, you go through the whole engine, so after that, outside of turn one, Bonfire's dead, you know, pretty much, you can't, you don't have anything to add, because I don't play any more level one fires. Um, I don't want to cut consistency, but maybe this could be dropped down a little bit, um, especially since the day that we're recording this is they just announced the Fire King, uh, Consort Olkinix, whatever her name is. And, uh, which she's another good normal summon. Um, so maybe we change up these ratios or some sort of things to make room for Olkanix. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Just dead drew this card a lot all weekend. Uh, and then the 1-1 one, one for 1. It can get you all of your Snake Eye cards or the Baby Chicken. Then we got 1 Arvada, 1 Garenix, and then 2 Kirin. Uh, definitely just need one of these. Don't really want to draw them. Just want to search them. Search this with Island. Pop this from deck. Uh, drawing Baby Chicken is not bad, um, but most of the time it's accessible through your combo with Snake Eye Ash, Witch, all that stuff. So don't really want to draw it either since it is accessible. But it's not a bad draw because if one of your guys dies, you know you can just summon it from your hand, which is fine. And it's a level one fire at worst. Um, and then two Kieran. Uh, if I were to bump any of these guys up, it would probably be Kieran three. But I don't think you need it right now. Um, a lot of people in the format have strayed away from effect negation cards. Of course, infinite impermanence is still in everybody's deck, but Ghost Mourner and Effect Veiler have kind of exited the format a little bit. And uh, one of the big values this card has was whenever you normal summon something like Snake Eye Ash and they activated like um, imp uh, Imperm or Veiler on it, or if you like originaled and summoned out Snake Eye Ash and then they mortared it or something, you could chain Kieran to pop the Ash and then Ash would resolve to add Ponix and then Ponix would see the Snake Ash be resolved. So then this could summon, you could start the combo there, which was super, super nice. Um, so yeah, if I bumped any of them up, it would probably be just a three, but I don't think it's needed right now since we are straying away from effect negation a little bit. Also, this card was really, really good against Runic Stun, and with Skill Drain going to one, pretty much all their floods are at one now and stuff, so that card, that deck has pretty much exited the the game as a whole, uh, even at the regional level. So yeah, if I were to bump any of them up, it'd probably be this, but I think two is fine for right now. Especially with, maybe it could go up if we're getting like Olkinux, because you want more Fire King games, but we'll have to see. And then one Sanctuary, one Island, uh, just one on one. They're searchable with uh, Ponix, and you don't ever really want to open them. Uh, hand Traps, three Ash Blossom, three Nib, two Ogre, and then three Emperor. Uh, Ash and Emperor, just good guards. Self explanatory. Uh, Nib was probably the worst hand trap in my deck this weekend, and Ghost Ogre was probably the best hand trap this weekend. Um, I think this was probably the worst hand trap because I didn't play any uh, Snake Eye, where this card really, really gets to shine. Um, I played against a couple U-Bell and Tempai, where this card's awful, because Tempai, I mean, they're never ever summoning five times in the main phase. And then this card is just, like, unusable against U-Bell without another hand trap uh, because of Phantom. So I probably should have switched the ratios for this weekend. This would have been three, this should have been two. Uh, but yeah, Ogre was fantastic. 
Um, yeah, putting his Mimigul. Uh, I caught the guy's Mimigul dungeon twice, which was super nice. But the time where it really, really shines is against Tempai. Um, you can ogre their field spell. Or and you bell. Uh, being able to hit Spirit Gates is nice, but also if you can just ogre their Nightmare Pain, it can mess up their end board a lot. Also, it's pretty good against Fire King because a lot of the times if your hand is super weird and the way you have to combo... Um, you have to use, after you activate this and you place the island, if your hand's weird, you have to use Snake of Ashes in itself and this to get the Flame Burge, and then you can use the island. So if they have to do that, then you can uh, catch them with the Ogre on the island and then blow up their board, which is nice if this deck, if this deck continues to gain popularity. Uh, but yeah, this card's fantastic. It's really good against Memento, too. Um, you can Ogre there like your Seahorse, Mace, or anything like that, which is nice. And then rounding off the non-engine, we have three droplets, three talents, and then the called by. Uh, this card was incredible. Um, I think this should probably be in everybody's deck if your deck can play it. Uh, it's really good in this deck because you have a lot of spells and stuff that you can just send away for a droplet. Um, the only time it's a little weird is if you play against a deck that can put up a trap in like Desiree, for example. Like um, Ubel can put up the Unchained uh, Abominable Chamber or um, Escape and the Desiree. Because if you like droplets their board, you know they can chain the trap, then chain Desiree to beat the droplet. But a lot of times, if you're able to, like, push into their board and, like, make them use a Desiree or, like, make them use one of their guys and then chain the droplet, you can still, like, help push through and help, like, at least soften up the board. And it's uh, pretty good going first, too. You know, worst case, you, like, combo set droplet. It's pretty good. And then uh, Talents, this was, like, the worst defensive slash hand trap in my deck, but it still wasn't bad. Um, neither was Neb, even though I said it was the worst hand trap. Both, both of these cards were fine. Um... But yeah, this card is just like an absolute blowout, or it's like unusable. Like sometimes you just know someone's Snake Ash, it gets Empire, and this is like the only card you have, and you're just like, why? But uh, yeah, this card just deals with a lot of good problem cards. Um, like uh, for example, like Ubel, uh, and a lot of decks are making um Wave King Caesar on their end board, and this card is just fantastic against it because like a Ubel, they always use like their Phantom as their first negate usually, or their Verudris or something, and then you can like Talents take their uh, whatever negate. Worst case, it baits out the Desiree, then you can blow them out with a Droplet, or if you can just like take one of their uh. They're monstrous, like the Nudity Wave King Caesar and stuff like that. And the Call by the Grave is the 40th card, because you know it has to be 40 or it's got to go. Uh, this card's going to go in first or second now, because uh, Phantom of Ubel. If you have this and they Phantom Ubel tributes for cost, you just blow them out with Call by the Grave. Extra deck. Once again, shout out to Sunny for this. This is, this is so awesome. Thank you, man. <laughs> mm -mm. One Anima. One Nightmare Phoenix. One Doolittle. Uh, this was like the best card in the extra deck, especially in Fire King, uh, because it's a beast, so you can summon it back from the graveyard with Arvada. Throughout the combo, uh, you make this whenever you have this and like Flamberge on the field, and then you use Island to pop this and add Garenix, and then you'll trigger this and Garenix. This will add back Snake Eyes Oak from your graveyard, so that way you have follow-up, and then you'll summon Garenix, and then Garenix will pop Arvada from the deck, and then Arvada can bring this back because it's a beast. So that way you get to use the Link 2 effectively twice, because then you have the Flamberge, this, and Garenix, and then this and uh, Garenix can make um, the princess, and the princess can bring back Arvada, the way you're safe to nib, and then you can, wait, then you can link away the Flamberge and the, uh, the princess. So yeah, this card's very, very good on the Fire King deck. Uh, one Sunlight Wolf, um, just another generic, like, fire link to that you need sometimes in order to get princess off the board so you can link for other stuff. Uh, it's really good on the Fire King version because you can add back, like, Snake Eyes Oak, and then, um, you just have, like, a lot of bodies that you can put up with the Fire King stuff. Adding back Kieran is really, really nice. But the best part about it is, um, adding back a non-engine, such as, like, Snake Eye Ash. Um, it, which is going to be super important into the upcoming Rota format with Fuwa Wasp being, or whatever its name is, the new Mulchi, uh, being so popular. That's because if they, uh, on your turn, if they Mulchi you, then you can uh, negate it with uh, Ash Blossom. And then throughout the Fire King combo, you can just make this and then summon something under it. Like when you're Snake Eyes cards or whenever you link away Flamberge or whatever, just put something under this and then this can add back the Ash Blossom. That way you have effectively looped one card of their hand, being the Mulchi Fuwa Wasp guy, and then you still have the Ash for the follow-up. IP, SP, uh, this is just part of your end board. This is what you're always making with the IP. The card's incredible. Uh, heat it and dark, just the two charmers. Basically, you just need them to go into Selene or Princess. Uh, they're just there to link climb. Uh, fire decks are good. This has got to be in there. And then this, because of uh, Ubel, you know, a lot of times you're just taking a random monster so that way you can link into Princess. But there were a couple times where I took like Unchained Soul of Rage, and it was super, super nice because then you can use the Rage against your opponent to make SP. Um, round one, I beat Tempai because I was able to take a shifter and then, uh, climb into Princess and OTM. Two Princess, uh, I think this might be mandatory now. Maybe not. I don't know. I guess it depends if you're playing Fiendsmith cards or not. Um, but yeah, I think you can get away with this a lot easier in the Fire King version because bringing back Flamberge is good, but bringing back Garunix is very good because then it could pop a Karen from deck, bring back another body and pop a card. And then it just uh, helps you get away with like still playing a low Snake Eye count, like uh, just the one Ash, one Oak, one Poplar, stuff like that. 
because they're all they're pretty much all at one now. But yeah, this just being able to revive Oak or revive stuff um, on the follow-up turn, because most of the time people don't expect the second one. Uh, it helps in the combo, helps insulate it a lot from Nibiru too, because you get to a point where you have this and Flamberge, and then you're about to use this to revive Arvada. And at that time where you have Flamberge and this, is their last time to nib. So if they nib, you know, clears this in the Flamberge, you get two tokens... Or one token, and then the two uh, snake eye bodies, and then you just link like a token and a snake eye body into IP, and then you use the IP and the other random body to make the uh, second princess, and then princess can bring back Arvada and or Flamberg, and you can keep doing stuff. So yeah, two came up a lot, super super nice. One Amber Whale. Uh, this is my favorite card in the extra deck. Uh, just such a cool card. Um, it's uh, hidden at last effect. It's super cool too. A lot of people forget about it whenever a link monster is uh, destroyed. And it counts as uh, yours or your opponent's link monster. You can just banish from the graveyard to uh, pop a card, which is super, super nice. Um, it comes up a lot with Arvada because um, if you have like Arvada on the field and this, it's usually part of your inboard. You then use Princess. You pop this. This goes to the graveyard. This triggers to bring back like Doolittle Chimera or something. And then um, you can use the Arvada to either pop a Doolittle Chimera or pop this to negate a monster effect. And then after it goes to the graveyard, since it was destroyed by Arvada's effect, you can banish this from a graveyard to pop an additional card, which is super, super nice. Uh, Zealantis and Raging Phoenix, just the standard Snake Eye OTK package. Um, just being able to end games on a dime is super, super nice. And then we have the two useless cards. I never made either of these all weekend. These are the only two cards in my trick that I didn't summon. Uh, I mean, in theory, like, they're fine, right? Just being able to bring back a Black Witch to set an original is super nice. And then, uh, you know, you have the charm, which you easily link common to it. And then you would just bring back Black Witch, and then those two would make access code to try to go for a game. But this is how you're usually ending most games. And most of the time, if you're able to make a link through, you're making Princess over this. So I don't think you need these, but yeah. And then lastly, side deck. Uh, Bestials, just good against Ubel and other random things. You never know what you're going to play against at a regional. Uh, three Perulia, just really, really good going seconds. Uh, you just want to draw as many cards as possible. Just extra hand traps. Pretty good against Ubel. It's someone from the hand a lot of times. Pretty good against Tempai. Whenever you make them go first, they got to at least give you, like, the two cards if they want to make seals, or if they just pass, totally fine with me. You're just going to kill them. And then you got your blowout spells. Change of Heart, Regeki. Both these are crazy. Or Change of Heart and Heather the Destronaut, Regeki. And then uh, Skyburn, um, once again, just for the weird matchups, you know, play against like Runic Stun or Lab or something like that. Worst case, you just need like an extra card to side out or something because Nibiru or some hand traps or like Droplet aren't the best going first, whereas uh, Skyburn's at least searchable. And uh, yeah, you just pop extra cards and stuff like that. Uh, three Barrier, uh, really, really good against like Tempai. Um, it's all right against Ubel, but most of the time you don't want to side it in. But yeah, it's really good against Tempai and it's really good against the weird decks like uh, Ritual Beasts and things like that. But yeah, it can just be an absolute blowout sometimes. And then we got two power traps, skill drain, and anti spell. I drew this card a lot this weekend. This card's absolutely insane. Ban them, please. And then the uh, last card in the extra deck was the Fuko. Uh, I was never losing to Tempai. I mean, or any deck. If they just shift you, I just put it in against any shifter deck and Tempai always, of course. Because uh, if they shift you, whatever, just two snake eye cards, you just normal Ash, get popular, they shift you, whatever. You get the original for the follow up, and then those two guys make this. They can't kill you, and the next turn you just kill them on the crackback. But yeah, guys, uh, thank you for watching, and then I hope to see a lot of you guys at YC Snagger.